Welcome to the Chow Hall, where they feed you trash ass food three times a day. All the way from shit on a shingle, coffee cake, yellow grits, to the rest. Here we go. Ha <laughs> ha, Dom the best. Finna be this way till I EOS. Take it how you want, nigga. Yeah, I'm a pro. Fuck around, I bust your lot while you're at Vizzo. I hate to be this way, but I live for the moment. Waking up every day, show me an opponent. Shanks on deck, hitting bitches with locks. So much pool, I can even start you from the box. You don't wanna pay rent? Got me bent. Got lacks on deck, your money was well spent. Vultures on the prowl, so don't try testing. Step two, cause violent first steps, finessing. You a hold down man? Suitcase this. My cell phone, I'm a charger, don't walk with a limp. Get it knocked off or missing? You gon' get it. Next time I see you ass, you gon' leave airlifted. What's up everybody, you already know man, K Fraud TV back in the building. Y'all go ahead and do me that solid favor, make sure you hit that like subscribe button and make sure you hit the notification bell so you can see it first. Also make sure your bell is placed on all not personalized or you won't be notified every time a video drops. You'll start thinking that I ain't dropped no videos in a while or YouTube may have unsubscribed you by mistake. So y'all get on top of that. But for this one here, I'm gonna be speaking on surviving on the food that they give you in prison. I'm not talking about, you know, the canteen, which is the chips, the soups, the honey buns, the cupcakes, the sodas, the waters, the coffee, the tuna, the oatmeal. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the actual food that they whip up and give you to eat if you're a person who don't have no money or a person that don't have no backbone or no source of income or someone sending you anything or friends in there to help you eat, anything like that, to where you gotta survive off of just what is supplied in the chow hall. Now, I will say this first quarter, you can survive off that food, all right? I've done it plenty of times. I've been in confinement and there was no way for me to send a kite out to go you know, hit the canteen window or tell someone to send me some food back there plenty of times to where my damn stomach was touching my back and I was back there starving. Like, bitch, I hope I make it to the next meal, dog. This is not the way frog goes out. They are not finna come in here and find frog stiff like a stale loaf of bread. I can't let my kid think, man, I died from, you know, starvation, bitch. I gotta go out like a gangster or something, not stuck in this little six by 10 with nothing to eat. Those are the type of things that used to go through my mind, bro. Like, bitch, I gotta make it through here. Now, when they feed you, of course you get breakfast, lunch, and dinner, all right? Now, the meals they give you taste like shit. Some of them taste good, it all depends on who the cook is back there. But when you're in confinement, you don't get what the whole compound gets. Like on Tuesdays, chicken day, yeah, it's either getting a patty or hot dogs. You're not gonna get chicken. They make it seem like you getting chicken is a fucking privilege. Tuesdays, you do not get it no, in the box, no matter what camp you were at. Now, like I said, depending on who's back there, however they whip it up, depends on if it tastes good or if it's bland as hell, you feel me? And that shit's so bland that when, when you go to the chow hall, people are bringing their, their season packs from their soup, their, 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 their top ramen, and, and you know what I'm saying? And using that shit to add a little bit of flavor to it. In the county jail, you know, we use the Tijuana Mama. We crush up a Tijuana Mama sausage and put it in there, you know, or the Snyder's Buffalo Pretzels, crush them shits up, put it in there to add a little bit of flavor. But in prison, when they feed you, you get like a ridiculous portion. It isn't like they give you a big weefy ass tray to where, you know, that shit gon' you know, sit right with you. It ain't like that at all. They literally give you the amount to where you're just not hungry right now. That's all it is. That shit don't even hold you to the next meal. You'll still be hungry. Your, your, your stomach will be growling, you feel me, sooner than when the next feeding is. Let's put it that way. Like it ain't like your stomach's still gonna be growling after you ate it, no. It's gonna hold you off, and then as you get closer to the time when the next meal's supposed to come, then your stomach's gonna start growling. You're gonna be looking at the time if you gotta watch, or if there's a clock in your dorm, you're gonna be like, bitch, I can't wait to go to chow. You know, so you not having no canteen in there or commissary or, you know, anything to eat other than the chow hall food is tough. You know what I'm saying? I lost so much weight in prison and it wasn't from not eating. Okay, believe it or not, because even though there was times that I was in confinement and there was times that I didn't have commissary, you know, not just because I didn't have money and shit like that, but because you're on the officer schedule. You know, you can't hit the window when you want to hit the window. If you ain't got shit in your locker, you know, or say you got $20 left in there and you decide, oh, I'm going to get sleeved up. I'm going to get tatted with the last $20 I got in my locker. 
He's really charging 30 when I talked him down to 20. Now you gave him everything in your locker because in your mind you're going to hit the canteen window later today or tomorrow. Officers lock down the pound. They don't let nobody out for five days. Now your ass ain't got no food. So now you're stuck eating chow hall food for a while. But believe it or not, I lost so much weight in prison. And it wasn't because I wasn't eating. It's because I have a slow metabolism. So the more I eat, the more my metabolism's going. Okay? And I actually lose weight like that. All right, and I and I re, and I figured this out recently since I've been on the street since I've been eating healthy. You know, I've lost about 40 pounds in the last like five months out here on the streets. Now, what it is is, even in the county jail, I get you could only get a 60, which is which is how much you could get in your account a week in the county jail. You can get a 60 and a pack. I used to eat a 60, a pack, and every meal they gave me in the county jail. I would eat so much. And I would just lose so much weight because I kept my metabolism going. Then I'd get on the streets and I'd barely eat. Probably eat maybe one time a day. Wake up in the morning, ain't got time to eat breakfast. Out there chasing money, doing what I got to do. Gone, gone. Left and right. And it wasn't that I wasn't hungry. It's just that I literally forget to eat, you know. And then I'd eat one meal a day. And what it was is my body was storing that one meal, okay. It was storing that meal as, and it was like as it go into survival mode, thinking that it ain't going to be fed again for a long time. So as my metabolism wasn't going as good as it should, I was just gaining straight weight. You see what I'm saying? But now, last couple months, I kind of like my schedule of eating is the same exact schedule that they give you in prison. You know, I make sure I eat me a breakfast, even if I go back to sleeping a little bit. You know, same thing with lunch, same thing with dinner. You know, I have a snack. I keep my metabolism going. I'm not on no diet or nothing. I just eat healthier. You get what I'm saying? I don't eat bland foods. I still eat whatever I feel like eating. If I want pizza, chicken wings, if I want barbecue, no matter what it is, I will still eat it. But the fact that my metabolism is always going, I've actually lost a ridiculous amount of weight. Okay? Now, when it comes to the food in prison, like I said, they're going to give it to you and it's so bland that you're not going to want to go eat that shit. You're going to be like, damn, dog, I can't believe I got to eat this shit, dog. You feel me? And after a while, you're going to learn the schedule. You're going to know it by heart. You ain't got to look on the menu and see what it is because there's only four weeks in a month and you already, you, eventually you learn what you get every single, you get the same shit every month, whether it's week one, two, three, or four. That's how they go by on what the meals are in there. You see what I'm saying? And the thing that sucks the most is not knowing who the cook is back there because that shit ain't just bland, but that shit's like, like slop. You get spaghetti, since when is spaghetti sloppy? You know, where you gotta slurp it like you're eating soup. You know what I'm saying? You get, you get beef and noodles, you know, macaroni. No matter what it is you get in there, it could be just plain pasta with nothing on it and that shit's sitting in some fucking type of water, liquid. You know what I'm saying? Yakisobi. That was the first meal I had in prison. Some camps, they make that shit pretty good. But other camps I've been to, that shit was s sitting in water, bro. You feel me? Now, it sucks to have to survive off of those meals. But me having to survive off the meals at certain times made me eat things that I had never ate before. Like, for instance, squash and zucchini. I eat that shit all the time now when I make my meal preps. I have squash and zucchini in there, all right? I've ate it a couple times on the streets before that, but maybe once or twice ever in my life. In prison, you'll be in confinement, they'll give you a tray, it's always got a vegetable on there. They used to give us this old nasty, soggy ass looking squash and zucchini. But, having to survive back there and eat whatever the hell they give me, you best believe I used to fuck that squash and zucchini up. And all the bunkies I had, every single bunkie I got would not eat that shit. They wouldn't even look at it. It was like I was the alien in the bunch. Because every time I got it, I, I smashed that shit. They wouldn't even look at it. They wouldn't even touch it. They eat the rest of their tray. I'd be like, let me get that squash. I used to mess it up, boy. And now I love squash and zucchini. They gave us okra back there before. You feel me? The little okra thing. And when you bite it to it, it's got the little beads all in the middle of that shit. They gave us those back there. You feel me? I've had fried okra on the streets. But I ain't never had actual okra. Shit all slimy and shit. When you pull it out of the tray, it's got like a slime stuck to it. It looked like some shit from the Alien movie. Like Alien vs. Predator. Like that slime shit was stuck to it. Ate that shit back there. Ate it faithfully. You feel me? And you know, 
you happen to survive off that shit, you're going to have to consume whatever it is they give you. They gave us these patties one time, and this was the one thing that I was like dwelling on eating. They gave us these patties. They were white. They started giving us white patties. Every time they gave us that shit, and they were never evenly shaped. They were always like either fat and, and like all sideways. They were funny looking, you know what I'm saying? And I always would dwell on eating them shits. I'm like, hell nah. But when I take the bite, that bitch was fire. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, they know what they're doing. But at the same time, I don't know what I'm eating. You feel me? Now, it sucks. Of course, having commissary, you know, goes a long way. That's why in a lot of my K Frog TV videos, you see while I was in the box, in the two man cells back there, I had canteen. I had floors filled with canteen while back there in the box. There's been times where I didn't eat chow at all. Every bunkie I got in the box at the time when I was living off canteen, when I had the perfect route to always get it back there, every single bunkie I had got an extra tray. I wouldn't even eat that shit when it come, literally. I didn't care if there was a cake on it. I didn't care what we had for chow. I'd get that shit to my bunkie. And I even bust down with my bunkie sometimes, depending on if I fought with him like that. You know what I'm saying? I even bust down with him whatever I bust open inside the cell. Because I know he's hungry. We in here too deep. We smell food from the chow hall. We smell that shit through our window. We in this bitch starving. And I got all this food and I'm not running through it because I don't want to run out. You feel me? I want to re-up and get my shit sent back here before I run out of what I got. I had pickles all on the floor, I had soups, honey buns, five different chips, candy, sodas, everything you could think of I had while in can uh, confinement. You feel me? And I lived off that shit. Now while on the compound, I even lived off of my out of my locker. It was like going into a corner store every day, getting whatever you want and eating it. That's, and I did that shit for months at a time, didn't even go to the chow hall. I lived out of my locker faithfully. You see what I'm saying? And eating all that bad shit and everything. All them chips, honey buns, cupcakes, you know, oatmeal. Every single thing that comes inside of a corner store that's got a lot of sodium or a lot of carbs or a lot of calories. I was running through that shit and still losing weight in prison because I kept my metabolism going. And I was always active, constantly moving, doing shit. You feel me? Now, of course it feels better when you live off of, you know, canteen. When your people send you money or someone owes you and they got to pay you. I don't care if I had two lockers filled with shit. If someone owed me and they paid me, it felt good every single time. You feel me? That's more. I got more than I need right now. And this dude's finna pay me. I'm finna collect. I'm going to have three times as much now. But when it comes to having to live off the food that they give you in prison, you better be ready. You better be ready for your stomach to touch your back. You better be ready to taste new things. You better be ready to look at some shit and eat some shit that don't even look appealing. It don't even look like you want to eat it. It's not like you're going to sit there and be like, before you dig in. No, none of that. You're going to grab that motherfucker, stick it down like that, go like this, and fucking eat away. Try to inhale it. If it don't taste good, you're going to try to inhale it and eat as much as you can before you take your breath again. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, depending on where you go, sometimes they whip it better because it's inmates that work in the kitchen. You feel me? So if you got someone back there that wants to whip it real good and add seasonings and do what they want to do, then you're good. That's why a lot of people like to go to work camps because work camps supposedly got better food. You know, because instead of being on a compound where there's like 1,800 to 2,100 inmates, you go to a compound where there's only 200. So the, the person in the kitchen only got to cook for 200 inmates. So he's going to, you know, he's going to whip that shit. He's going to make sure that shit tastes exotic compared to on the main compound where there's 1,800 inmates. That motherfucker ain't finna go back there and take his time bread and all that shit and seasoning everything up. Man, he finna go back there and just whip that shit and try to get it gone. Get up out of there. You see what I'm saying? But you can survive off just prison food. There's plenty of people that done it. There's people in there with life sentences that been in there for over 20-something years that's all their family done died off. They don't have nobody on the streets. And they look forward to the meals. Literally. You feel me? Me, I hate the smell of coffee cake to this day. Coffee cake's good. You feel me? I can eat it. I won't say I don't like it. You know? But they coffee cake me the fuck out while I was in prison. When I got to Charlotte CI, they used to only give you coffee cake two times a week when I was in prison. It was Wednesdays and Sundays. But when I got to Charlotte CI, they gave you that shit five times a week. 
Five times a week you was getting coffee cake, bro. Early in the morning. And I never would go to child, but you could smell it every morning. You'd smell that cinnamon shit. You'd smell it across the whole compound. Bitches come back. You know what I'm saying? You're like, oh, man. When they come back in the dorm and shit, they got that scent all on them. And it was like coffee cake. Fucking cologne. You know what I'm saying? Like, so to me, that shit there is just played out. Played out. You feel me? Like, and the way we would eat that in prison, which a lot of people like the coffee cake because it sticks to you the best. You know what I'm saying? And it depends on where you go. They might give you two big ass bricks like this. Thick ass shit. You might, you get two pieces. So it might be bam, bam. Or you might go and it might be like this, a little thin shit. Or you might get one big block, one little skinny one. It all depends on what you get and who cooks what. You know, and if they want to put oatmeal on top of it, like dry oatmeal, so that way it like puts a little crust with, with some cinnamon and sugar and all that shit, then you're good to go. It tastes good. It does taste straight. You feel me? But since I've been on the streets, I literally bought a box, you know, where they sell like the zebra cakes and the little swish rolls and the scar crunch and all them little things. They had a box of individual coffee cakes and I bought them because everybody used to say, nah, bruh. And it, it don't taste nothing like the ones on the streets, bro. The ones on the streets are it, like like the shit. So I was like, you know, I never really fucked with coffee cake before I went to prison. So when I got out, I bought a box of them bitches, opened that shit up. The smell alone, the smell alone just made me, gave me like flashbacks. Deja vu. I ate that motherfucker one bite and I was good. I was like, never again. I'll stay away from the coffee cake. But if I had to eat it, I could eat it. But hell no. Nah. We used to get that shit and you put it on your plate and you put butter because it come with a scoop of butter on the side. You put the butter atop the two pieces and then you put your oatmeal on top of it, like the, the wet oatmeal, and it like falls over and covers it and you eat it. Gas. It is good like that, you feel me? Because all you taste is oatmeal. It tastes like cinnamon oatmeal. But that shit's played out. You know what I'm saying? But this video is to let y'all know it is tough trying to survive on just the food they give you in prison. They make so much money per inmate. You know, they get so much money... It's ridiculous that the way they feed you in there, okay? Because as much as the income they get, it's not that, you know, they're, they're, they're obviously feeding every inmate. They have enough to feed every inmate. But it's the portions, and it's the quality of the food. They, I feel like they should give inmates more and, and better food than they do. You get what I'm saying? Not just holidays. You know, on holidays, yeah, they try to bless you like on Christmas and Thanksgiving, stuff like that. But I've told this before. If Christmas is in the middle of the week and say they're going to give you barbecue chicken, they're going to give you just a regular quarter of chicken that you normally get, but they're going to brush barbecue sauce on it to make it different. You know what I'm saying? But say, say Christmas falls on Thursday. When Tuesday comes, you're not getting chicken like you normally would. They're not going to give you chicken two times a week. They're going to sacrifice you on that Tuesday when the whole world knows in prison that you get chicken on Tuesdays. They're going to give you hot dogs or they're going to give you a patty or something like that. Instead, they're going to buck you Tuesday and just push it off till the Christmas day. See, that right there is wrong. I feel like you should get what you get Tuesdays, which everyone's looking forward to. And then if they want to bless you on the meal for Christmas, then bless you on the meal for Christmas. But instead, they, 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 they swap them out. You see what I'm saying? Whatever you were supposed to get that day that the, the Christmas is on, that's what you're going to get on Tuesday if it falls in the same week as the Christmas dinner. You feel me? And shit like that is just bullshit. Because, you know, like I said, it's the government, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's the, man, it's the, it's the, the fucking state, bro. You know they get way more money than they actually put in. You know? But when you have to survive off that shit... It's kind of tough because you see all these other people in there eating shit from the, from the canteen window. You see all these people walking around eating chips, soups, and all that shit. That shit, man, you look at him, bro, and he might be eating something you don't like. He might be eating a bag of chips that you don't fuck with. But, boy, the way he eating them bitches just make it look good. You like, bitch. And that's why there's a lot of robbing in prison because people can't just survive off the chow hall food. You can, but to them, they can't. So they rob people, they want food, they want shit to eat. If they fed people better and had everybody walk around this bitch looking like Marshmallow or the Michelin Man off the tire company, if they had everybody walk around looking all fat and chubby from feeding them and overfeeding them, I guarantee you, bitches ain't gonna be robbing for food. 
They might still rob because, you know, they want to buy dope or whatever else they're robbing for. But it won't be because they're hungry. You know what I'm saying? Bitches might be too big and out of shape, high cholesterol and diabetes and high blood pressure and all that shit. That they'll run out of wind quicker when a fight sparks off. So the officers could just sit back and watch the two chubby people, you know, eventually die down on their own. We ain't even got to pop a can of gas on them. Just let them, let them get their little 15 seconds in. They'll, they'll run out of air. You see what I'm saying? That's real shit, though. So I feel like if they did more, less would happen inside of prison. And I'm going to end it on that. That's basically all I'm going to say. But I just wanted to drop this video, man, to let y'all know how it is surviving off of the chow hall food. It can be done. It's being done today, right now, as you're watching this video. It's been going on for decades, okay? There's some people in there that's never, ever, ever had any canteen sent to them at all. They have to live off that chow hall food. You feel me? But when you got so many people that are looking, you know, forward to it, why not make it better than it is? You see what I'm saying? Like, why not up the quality and up the portion size? Which they never will, though. It ain't like I'm dropping this video to spread the awareness of it and ask them to do that. Because they're never going to. This is just a video to let y'all know that it is tough surviving off that chow hall food if you do not have no canteen. If you got you an old lady on the streets, or if you're a woman watching this and you got you a husband on the streets, you better treat them good if you live the life of crime. Because if you ever go to prison... That person is going to be the one person that you're going to expect the most from. You're going to be telling that person to drop my money, to drop my money, this, that, this, that, because you're going to be starving in there. Literally. You're going to be wanting so much shit that you're going to hope your partner can manage to stay up to it. Real shit. And if you're someone that, you, you know, uses drugs a lot on the streets, when you go to prison, you're going to get fat. Because on the streets, you're not eating as much as you're supposed to be eating. You get what I'm saying? You're going to get fat when you get locked up. You're going to gain some little weight, and then you're going to come home looking bigger and, and looking healthy. Me, I didn't do drugs. So before I went to prison, I was fat. When I went to prison, bitch, I lost weight because I was used to eating whatever the hell I wanted on the streets if I wanted to eat, and I rarely ate. So my metabolism was barely ever going. Then when I went to prison, like I said... I was eating shit left and right, 24-7, boom, boom, boom. I learned to eat sardines in prison, y'all, which, you know, that right there is like the bottom of the line. That's the bottom of the bracket when it comes to fish. I didn't like fish at all before I went to prison. I liked shrimp and lobster. I didn't like any type of fish before I went to prison. And then I had to force myself to eat a pack of sardines from starving in confinement. After being back there for like 200 days, I would throw the sardines out for free. You feel me? And then I eventually I said, fuck it, bro. I'm going to eat them. Because my bunkie owed me. I said, and I didn't want to let him get away with it. So I, I, I collected. And instead of me throwing them shits out, I said, I'm going to try them. Fell in love with sardines. The bottom of the barrel. Now to this day, I can eat tuna, salmon, cod, fucking mahi, mahi. It don't matter what it is. Now I love fish. You feel me? And it all started because I learned to eat the bottom shit. The, the, the bottom... Worst fish you could possibly like. The fishiest shit I learned to eat in prison while starving. Straight up. But anyways, man, I'm going to wrap this video on up. I appreciate y'all tuning in. Y'all go ahead and drop in the comment section, man. Let me know what y'all think. Let me know if, you know, if when y'all were ever locked up, if there was some shit that you liked, if there was times you were starving, you was hungry. Would you eat that shit every single day? Even things that you wanted like? Would you just consume it because you had to? Or would you starve? Would you miss meals? Would you eat what only you like? All that. I'm curious. Y'all drop it in the comment section, man. But I'm going to wrap this one up. Like I said, I appreciate y'all watching. Y'all already know to keep them lames, them squares, them clowns, them rats, them chomos, them pedos, them heavy gunners, all them out of your circle, man. Until next time, this is Frog.